How's it going everyone and welcome to Formar Ranch. Now today I'm excited to share with you what is probably one of the coolest items I've got to test to date on the channel and that is the AccuFire Incendus Thermal. Now this is not only an entirely capable standalone thermal unit but it is also a very effective thermal clip-on unit. That being said there's going to be a lot of talking points to cover so if you're someone who doesn't want to sit through the entire video check the description below where I will have different timestamps to the different categories that we're going to cover. Now, additionally, if you decide you want to invest in the AccuFire Incendus for yourself by the end of this video, you can use discount code 4MR. So that's going to save you 5% on this optic. It will also help support the channel. Now, on that note, guys, what is my relationship with AccuFire technology? Well, they're a Texas-based company. I absolutely love supporting fellow Texas companies, being a Texan myself. That being said, I would never promote anything that I would not want to purchase for myself. I would never advocate for you to waste your own money if I wouldn't want to waste my own money. So, so far, I've had nothing but an incredible experience with this optic, but we're going to get into that in more detail. Okay, but first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at what is included should you pick one of these up. Obviously, the optic itself, real quick, I'm going to just give you a general overview. So you have a power button on top as well as two kind of controls and a center select or menu button. And again, we're gonna do a full menu walkthrough later in the video. Be sure to check the timestamps below, again, depending on what you're looking for in this video so you can skip around. You do have a pick and tenny rail section on the right-hand side of the optic. You also have a rubberized cover protecting a micro USB type C port that has multiple functions there. And on the bottom, you do have your quick detach mounts. Now, I would say that these pretty much are exactly like a Midwest Industries mount. I wouldn't even be surprised if Midwest Industries was somehow involved in this because they look pretty much spot on with some of my Midwest Industries locking levers. And functionally, they performed on par with something like a Midwest Industries or American Fence mount. Been very, very pleased with these. No issues whatsoever. The tension is adjustable even by hand. You don't really need tools. So if you were to unlock it, you can actually adjust the tension there ever so slightly. Some rail sections have different tolerances, so you can make sure it is set up for your particular setup. Now on the left-hand side is where the batteries are installed. So it's just threaded, it does have an O-ring to keep it nice and sealed. Four internal CR123 batteries are easily installed right there. So you power it internally, but using that USB Type-C port on the other side, it is able to be externally powered as well. So pretty versatile there. And of course you have your front lens, which is pretty mean looking. I like how it's kind of a darker, almost black finish. I've seen some different colors on different thermal units. And then this nice knurled front piece is actually where you can focus the image depending on the range that you are trying to shoot at. And then you do have a removable rear rubber piece on the back and we'll get into a little bit more on that here in just a bit. Now while we're talking about the optic itself, I will say that my initial impression was very solid. Now when I picked this up out of the box for the first time, I just thought that it was very very well built right out of the gate. I mean it feels pretty hefty, not necessarily heavy, but it just feels very solid, very rugged. There's nothing really cheap about it, nothing feels kind of flimsy whatsoever. I don't anticipate anything being fragile on this and now after over four months of really regular and solid use, this is actually showing you guys this optic after this use. So I'm filming this after the fact and it has held up incredibly well. So again, it seems like it is built to last and so far that is definitely the case. You get four CR123 batteries. They are rechargeable. So it's a pretty handy touch. These can get kind of costly so I'm really glad that AccuFire did include rechargeable batteries to help kind of save some cost over time, especially if you plan on using this optic pretty heavily. Now adding to the level of convenience, you also have a four prong USB charger to be able to charge all four of those batteries simultaneously rather than having to charge them one at a time. And now while we're on the subject of cables that are included, you also get this interesting cable here that is gonna be somewhat proprietary to the incendus. So make sure you take good care of this cable. You do get a USB Type-C connection that is nice and 90 degrees. There's some flexibility here. And 
What this is going to let you do is you can hook up your antennas to an external DVR. The AccuFire does not record internally. I will have some sample footage from what you kind of get out of this. So this cable does have a male RCA jack and it also has another male USB. So what essentially is what this lets you do is when you plug in the USB type C cable into the actual incendus body, you can still have this plugged into a battery bank using this USB connection and recording with an external recorder. So again, we're gonna cover this in more detail, but just wanted to show you what is included in the box. Now you do get this narrow kind of eye cup and I will talk about this briefly. Essentially, this is gonna pair very nicely if you have an LPVO or something with a smaller tube um, that doesn't have a large like 50 millimeter objective lens. So this pretty much works perfectly with the uh, 30 millimeter LPVOs that I had around. It'll line up real nice if you want to kind of have something suited for the optic that you're running specifically. Whereas the end cap that is going to be installed on the optic, it pretty much lines up perfectly with a 50 millimeter objective lens on most standard rifle scopes. Now you do get a microfiber cleaning cloth that has AccuFire's logo on it to help you take care of your optic over time. And speaking of taking care of your optic over time, the last thing that will be included is going to be this neoprene pouch, which has just a simple drawstring opening so that you can cinch it down once your optic's inside since the optic can be stored off of your rifle since it does have QD levers. So just something for you there in case you want to store it off of your setup. Okay, so I want to talk about the clip-on configuration first because I personally found that to be the most value added out of this optic. In fact, I probably ran it about 95% of the time as a clip-on optic versus the standalone. I'm not saying I have anything against how this optic performed as a standalone optic, um, but Again, I just found the most value added, and I'm gonna get into why. So first of all, if you are experienced with thermal optics, I don't mean to be insulting, but I'm going to kind of start from scratch here for those that may be watching this that are not as familiar. So for a clip-on thermal optic, what you're gonna need first is actually gonna be a something like this, a flat top rail that extends in front of the objective lens of your optic. You need a mounting point. So uh, if it wasn't uh, something like an AR platform, this one happens to be an AR-10 chambered in 308. Uh, you can have a bolt action, but you do need to have some form of rail system on the front. So it will not work without that. And this AccuFire Incendus has two quick detach mounts. I would say they're very similar to like an American Defense mount. So they're fully aluminum. They lock up very nice. They have some locking tabs. You simply press down this detent and it releases it. There's a little bit of spring tension to assist you in that. So all you do is you simply place it on the flat top rail. Now I always recommend pushing it forward so that when you fire the rifle, the momentum of the rifle is working in your favor. You already are butted up against a rail section rather than leaving a gap there and then you know you have some room for play and for things to smash around against each other if you don't have the tension set right. So that being said, all you do is you place it in front of your daytime optic. Now again, without being insulting to those who are very familiar with thermal optics, let's talk about why this is incredibly advantageous to you. So when you're zeroing a thermal optic by itself, it can be somewhat difficult to get a precise zero. Now, when I say precise, I'm talking about putting rounds through the same hole at 100 yards, which with something like this, a precision setup with a clear daytime optic, you can probably do off a bench rest. But with a thermal optic, you gotta remember, you're needing to see some form of heat signature. Now, for me personally, I actually use kind of like an X or a cross with electric tape. It radiates a little bit more energy back than plain white paper. So I can kind of line cross the hairs up decently. That being said, can I get precise enough to put the round through the same hole all day long like I probably could with this? No, I can't. I'm actually personally happy with roughly about a one MOA group when zeroing at 100 yards with the thermal optic. Now, for those of you guys who can do better, good on you, but I'd say that's about where I call it good for hunting hogs, right? I, I walk away, ammo is pretty crazy these days. Now, what the clip-on is gonna let you do is actually, you'll take this to the range, you'll zero this optic the way you are used to, you can get that really fine-tuned zero, you can see things much better. And then when you're ready to go on a hunt or you wanna switch to thermal, you add this clip-on, and you're essentially putting a thermal sensor in front of your now precisely zero daytime optic. So this has a number of ways it can be a huge advantage. Let's say you're a competitive shooter, you're really good with your setup. You know, you have something that's a little bit more like a race gun up there on top. You're really used to that trigger, you're used to that optic, you, you know the zero is good, but you wanna use that setup to go hunting 
Clip on Thermal is going to have you covered. It's going to convert that into a very effective hunting platform. Again, in the scenario where you have a precision platform where you, you, you know your zero, you know your ballistics, you want to take it a little bit longer range, but you are limited in what you can see through it at night, obviously, Clip on Thermal is going to have you covered there. So it's very, very versatile. In fact, this has been my latest hog hunting setup. I usually run the suppressed. The AccuFire and Sendus has made it really, really useful. So essentially, I got a nice zero of this during the daytime range hours, and I will drive around with this rig in the back seat of my truck, and I will use this as a spotting scope at that point. So I'll use it as a monocular, I'll drive around, I'll stop with the windows rolled down. Again, for those that don't know, you can't see through glass with thermal, it'll just reflect the IR spectrum of the glass. So I'll stop, and it's so small as a handheld that you can again use it as that. Now, when I see something, I'll stop the truck, I'll get out, and it's as simple as throwing this on, you know your zero is good to go. Okay, so now that I've talked to you briefly about how to mount this optic as a clip-on, let's talk about what to expect in terms of the overall performance when you're talking about any clip-on thermal optic. There's two primary factors when you're talking about performance or perceived performance when looking through this kind of setup. The first one is gonna be the sensor resolution of the optic, combined with the resolution of the screen inside of the optic. So how is it displaying or conveying that information to the user's eyes from the sensor itself? The second factor is actually going to be the base power magnification of your daytime optic, which some of you may overlook, but I'm gonna explain why that is pretty critical. Now keep in mind, you're essentially using a magnified optical rifle scope to zoom in and view a digital screen, which is displaying thermal information from a sensor. So your basis of all this information is first and foremost coming from the thermal sensor itself. So the higher resolution, the more definition, the sharper the image, the overall more detail that you're going to perceive to the user's eye. Now, that being said, keep in mind this is a teeny tiny display within here. So in the scenario or comparison that you're watching a 480p video on your cell phone, it's actually not gonna look that bad compared to watching it on your 65 inch flat screen TV. You'll notice that resolution a lot better. That being said, when you shrink it down, it looks better. To the user's eye, this looks very sharp. It has a display capable of portraying it as very sharp without getting into the specs too much because that's gonna be a separate section of the video and I don't wanna be all over the place. Skip to the specs if you're after that, but good to go overall there in terms of resolution. The next factor, like I said, is the base power of magnification, which again, I think is the easiest to overlook when considering this kind of setup. Now, let's say worst case scenario, uh, you have a six power base magnification on the extreme end, which actually I do have a rifle scope that has that. I would not recommend that to get the best performance out of this because you're again gonna be zooming in six times power on those pixels. So would you have an LPVO, a 1X, that would probably be the most ideal and best case scenario if you could pair it with that because you're gonna be able to see the entire display through that without being zoomed in on the sensor. So you're gonna get the most information possible because even if you have a, a one to four power LPVO, you crank it into four power, you're not zooming in with the thermal sensor itself, you're just zooming in on essentially a TV screen. So take a pair of binoculars, a scope, look at your TV screen, you'll kinda of see what I mean put it on the lowest power possible, of course it's gonna look better like that. But that's kind of what to expect. So I highly recommend a lower power optical scope paired with the clip-on. Okay, so let's say you wanna go ahead and run this as a dedicated optic. Now, in the scenario where you're gonna be replacing your existing optic with this, a quick suggestion I would recommend is once you turn the reticle feature on this optic, so again, you can have the reticle on or off, so if it's being used as a clip-on, you turn the reticle off so that it's not crowding your vision with your daytime reticle, but turn the reticle on in the menu system that we'll be going over later in the video and mount it in front of your daytime optic. What this is essentially gonna let you do is go ahead and co-witness that reticle with your daytime reticle, take the optic off, and then remove your daytime optic and go ahead and mount the dedicated clip-on where you would like to place it on your firearm or choice. Again, this is if it's possible, but essentially what, what that's gonna do is let you kind of bore sight this optic. So now you're one step closer to it being zeroed. In fact, you'll probably find you're pretty close to where you need to be. You're gonna have probably a little bit of point of impact shift just by mounting the optic further back. But just a quick tip for you, something to consider as well. Now you have a standalone thermal optic, again, completely capable and very effective. If you'd rather go this route to where you can directly look at that display in that thermal sensor without having a daytime optic in between the two, 
then by all means, go ahead and go that route. Really, the sky's the limit. There's so many things you can use this for. And since it is on a pretty solid quick detach mount, actually the return to zero is quite solid as well. So haven't had any issues with that. Again, I would say it's very similar to the quality of an American defense mount. As long as you set the tension that's suitable for the rail, you know, not too tight, not too loose kind of thing, find that sweet spot and you're essentially good to go. So you have a QD capable thermal optic. So once again, in the scenario, you wanna use this as your hunting optic, maybe to even save on some weight. You could still use it as a monocular while throwing your rifle in the back seat or passenger seat and use it as a spotting scope. And when you're ready, make sure you put it on the same section of the top rail and it just, like I said, goes on that easy and it's solid. So very, very good quality. And that's pretty much it in terms of, you know, using it as a standalone. There's a little bit less to talk about. Okay, so let's talk about the specs of this optic. What I find most important when looking at any thermal optic is going to be the sensor resolution. This one is rocking a 384 by 288 sensor, which is right in line with other thermal optics of this price range. Now, although there's other offerings out there where you can increase or even double the resolution of the sensor that's included in the incendies, that more often than not will come with nearly double the price tag. And for me personally, I can't justify double the cost when I'm not really getting double the performance. For me, I find that the 384 by 288 sensor, which I actually have and am used to on multiple thermal optics that I've used or own, is more than good. Now in terms of thermal sensitivity of the sensor, there's two tests I like to do when I evaluate any thermal optics. The first is at close range. What I like to do, although it's not very scientific, is I watch my dogs walk across the carpet inside my house. Now keep in mind that carpet is an insulator, it's not a conductor, but even in the brief moments of contact where my dog's paws are walking across the carpet, I actually do see the glowing trail of paw prints behind them using this optic. Now on the other end of the spectrum, we can see things at 2000 yards glowing through this optic. That is the eye shot that we have at our property and we do have cows out there. So it makes it, you know, large things that we can identify. I can see things glowing at 2000 yards. Now disclaimer with that, in terms of being able to identify things with any thermal optic, I guarantee there are almost none, if not none whatsoever out there that you can actually identify a target at 2000 yards. With this one in particular, I can readily identify things between the 150 and 200 yard mark in, you know, with absolute certainty. Now, between two and 300 yards, you start having to kind of wonder what's going on there. And that's where you as a user, uh, specifically when we're talking about wildlife, you need to be familiar with the patterns of animals, how they move and how they interact with each other. For example, if I'm at 400 yards away at night and I'm trying to determine is that a group of cows or is that a group of hogs, I have to watch how the glowing outlines move and interact with each other. Hogs and cows do not act the same. So that's how I can personally identify things. But if you are a new hunter, you're not very familiar with animal patterns, I would say conservatively 150 to 200 yards max is gonna tell you what you're looking at at night. And that's about average with the other thermal optics that I've also gotten to use with the similar sensors. So. Sensitivity wise, paired with the resolution, I'd say it is on par with other thermal optics of this price range. Now in terms of magnification, it does have a one times, two times, and four times magnification. But again, you're gonna be doing that digitally by zooming in on the 384 by 288 sensor. And that's really the only time where the increased sensor resolution will shine. If you had double the resolution, obviously at four power uh, on this optic, it's gonna look twice as good as it would on you know double the sensor. So keep that in mind when using digital zoom. I Personally, don't really use digital zoom with any of my digital optics because the image kind of breaks down a little bit. It gets a little pixelated. The information from the sensor as well as the menu system inside is displayed on a 1024 by 768 display. In terms of batteries and battery life, this optic does accept four internal CR123 batteries. Using those, you get approximately four hours of battery life. Depending on the brightness, you have the internal display set to. So again, depending on how you're running it, I would say four, plus or minus an hour either direction. Now, if you compare that to similar optics, I'd say that's right in line from the research I did, anywhere from three to five advertised hours with similar clip-on thermal optics of this size. But here's the cool thing, it can be powered externally by a battery bank using the USB Type-C port that is built in. Now, in terms of different color modes, you have your traditional white hot and black hot, which most of you are probably familiar with if you've looked at thermal videos before. You do also have the option of green hot, but what I find most interesting about this is actually what they call their red accent. So essentially you get white hot 
but the warmest part of the profile is actually essentially highlighted in red. So you get the advantage of seeing the contrast of your environment like you would with a white hot profile, but with the added advantage of highlighting the things that are warmest. So would you scan a field, you'll still see all the warm outlines from the sunlight that was hitting it earlier, but if there's anything living, they'll literally be highlighted red on top of that. So again, I found it very interesting, whereas in a white hot mode, for example, everything that's warm still is glowing white, and the warmest things are just glowing white a little bit more. So I find it very, very useful and effective tool, especially when spotting. Okay, so I figured this would be a better time than any to go ahead and roll in some of this sample footage. Now, with that said, I got to have the caveat that there's a significant amount of data and sharpness loss when recording and exporting this footage. Now, not to the user's eye per se, but just to the exported video. Now, the best example of that, you'll notice there is actually a video export icon that's constantly displayed on the screen whenever I am using the DVR. Now, notice the lack of sharpness on that icon. Well, to the user's eye, through the optic, it is completely sharp and appears to be totally in focus where right now it looks a little fuzzy, almost as if it's out of focus. That gives you a little bit of an idea of what kind of resolution and clarity loss there is when exporting this video. So other than that, I'm going to go ahead and roll through some of the different color modes as well as some of the different contrast settings. And I'll stop talking and let you draw your own conclusions from some of the sample footage. Okay guys, so I wanted to go ahead and walk through the menu real briefly so that you kind of have an idea of what settings and configurations that you can adjust based on your needs and your experiences. So to pull up the menu, you're going to hold down for about three seconds the button on top of the incendus that has the M on it, and it'll pull you to the menu. Now to go up and down to the menu, which you'll notice does disappear like it just did if you sit idle too long. You simply press the up and down button. So first things first, this will let you adjust your zero. Now currently mine is set to negative five on the X and negative 19 on the Y. Now I highly recommend that you take advantage of the fact that you can jot those coordinates down so that if you pop it off of one rifle and put it on another, you can essentially re-zero you taking full advantage of the quick detach lever. So let's say I wanted to tweak the X 
all I would do is highlight X, hit the M button, which is selecting it. And now by pressing up or down, it's making the X go up or down. So let's say I wanted to you know, make that change. Well, there you go. You can see relative to the screen where that's going to be. And again, so let's say this is my zero on one rifle and I wanted to switch it back. I'm going to select X again and go back to that negative five and it should be right where I had it. So that is one of the big advantages there to a coordinate system. Now to exit, I'm just going to go up to that exit and hit M again to go back. So now any change you make, it automatically will close out of the menu. So to pull it back up, you wanna hold the M down and we have the menu back in front of us. So now here's where you turn reticle off or on. So again, I'm just selecting M to toggle the controls and hitting up or down. So now you see we have the reticle feature turned on. So again, holding M, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Now next you have the cursor or screen adjustment. So you'll notice it looks similar to like a zero, but essentially what it's letting you do is centering the screen to the center line of your different optic in case you have any alignment issues. Now, the next thing on the menu is related to that and it actually allows you to have multiple profiles. So you'll notice that if I go here, I'm not really sure what you guys are gonna see. If you notice a quick shift to the right, uh, to the user's eye, the screen essentially looked like it moved and adjusted to the right and switch it back to one and went to the left. I'm not sure if that's gonna pick up in the recording. I'll annotate it on the screen. Now next we have the picture brightness. So you can tweak it for settings that work best with your eye or your environment. This is picture contrast. You'll notice I have mine set to five. So it is on a scale of one to five. I leave it right in the middle. This is a factory reset, which personally I have not messed with and I do not plan to mess with. Now you have an auto power off function, so you can set it for different amounts of time. As you can see, I leave mine off. This is an auto sleep function. Again, I leave mine off, although this would have saved me from killing the optic one time when I accidentally left it on overnight. Now this is where you have hot point track, which will essentially tell you the hottest point in the screen. So as I look around at this power strip, it's actually telling me that the hottest point is the plug and which is powering my 4MR light which actually makes sense. So this is something that it could kind of help you highlight whatever the warmest object is in the field. Me personally, I have this feature turned off, but it is kind of handy that if you want to, you can use it. I personally prefer less clutter in my reticle, but to each their own. Now this is the video export, which I'm sure you'll notice we have a similar icon in the bottom right hand portion of the screen. I cannot toggle this to off for you, otherwise you'll completely lose the feed. Now next is gonna be your compensation settings. So you can have one that'll be aperture focused or you can have one that is based on, essentially on the environment. I just leave mine on auto. I haven't had any issues. I would say that it pretty much does a compensation every 30 seconds to a minute, but that really depends on the frequency in which you're kind of changing your point of aim uh, at different environments and different thermal profiles. The scope can compensate in more or less frequent intervals, again, depending on what you were looking at. Now next is gonna be your screen brightness, which I doubt anything is going to show up on your end, but it is adjusting the brightness. So I have mine kinda of a little bit above the midpoint, again, to get a little bit more out of that battery. And then circling back, we have the exit. So by pressing that, you'll go out of the menu, or again, if you're not within one of the settings of the menu and you just leave it idle, it will back out of the menu by itself after about 10 seconds. Okay, so now I wanna talk about my overall thoughts and opinions on this optic and especially kind of tie in my experience with its reliability. Now, uh, me included, when you know talking about electric optics, we get a little bit more hesitant about the overall reliability, right? There's more things that can go wrong. It's more intricate than a standard optical rifle scope. And I get that. And I was like that at first too. I've used a handful of electric optics to date uh, a lot of which I've reviewed on this channel. I will say this is the first electric optic I have reviewed to date that has not had a single problem while reviewing it. Not a single problem. That is not an exaggeration. I've not had it freeze once. I've not had anything weird happen to me. 
uh, in terms of you know something failing. Uh, the scope never died unexpectedly. I've accidentally killed the scope by leaving it on, but it didn't die unexpectedly on the field when saying it had a full battery and then suddenly dying. That's not what happened. I left it on overnight. That's user error. That being said, is this optic perfect? No, it is not perfect. There's a couple things that can be improved for sure, but it is pretty damn close to being perfect. Again, for the price point, the versatility, what you're getting out of it. So, AccuFire. Here's some things that I would highly recommend be improved on this optic and some considerations for you guys when thinking about investing in this. Number one, the one thing that I really ran into that was a personal snag, if you choose to use this to export video and you turn the optic on because you wanna save some battery life and then you turn it back on, it will automatically default to not have the video export mode on. In fact, two of the hunts that I got before producing this video, I screwed that up two times in a row. So am I perfect? No, I'm not perfect. But for those of us that kind of keep our head in the clouds, that little function on this optic uh, kind of is something I'd like to see maybe updated in future firmware. So although it's not a major issue, that is my number one complaint. If there's one thing I can change about this optic, it would be that the settings default to where they were before you powered the optic off. So that if you do want to save some power when moving from location to location when hunting, you know that it's where you left it. You can turn it on on the fly. You don't have to go through the menu system to be able to export the video. So not that big of a complaint, but it is my largest complaint that I've discovered so far. Now the next one also kind of has to do with exporting video, and that is that you cannot internally record video, which is okay. A lot of thermal optics out there, you can't do that. However, the method in which you have to uh, export video, I found to be not the most user-friendly. So you do have to use the included cable that AccuFire provides. So make sure you hang on to that, that you don't damage that. If you do, reach out to them, see if you can get a replacement. But I actually purchased um, a variety of cables to try this. So a number of USB Type-C to HDMI to use different kind of recorders and displays. Um, I even uh, did provide or purchase my own USB Type-C to RCA cable to use with a different RCA style recorder, it didn't work. The only cable I got to work was actually the AccuFire provided cable, which is only a minor concern, um, but it is, again, kind of makes it a little bit more proprietary in terms of how you need to um, export that video. So the only company that I have been successful so far in terms of finding a recorder to record this is one called 3D Night Vision. I don't know a whole lot about them. Admittedly, AccuFire technology did um, point me in their direction when I asked, hey, how do I record the video? So they did. I gather that they're probably a pretty small mom and pop company, so I was happy to purchase one of the recorders to support this video effort uh, on my own dime, and uh, it worked successfully after that. So no issues. It records everything that you do see on the AccuFire screen. So we were good to go from there, which was you know nice, but again, like I said, it could be a little bit smoother. In a future generation or Gen 2 of this optic, if they had an internal recorder with an SD card slot built in, I think this optic would, again, be perfect because I would imagine the functionality would cover my complaint number one in some shape or form as well as having internal recording. There'd be nothing further I could recommend or complain about on this optic. Everything else has been quite literally perfect. The buttons uh, don't get squishy. You know, there's uh, they're not super tactile, but they don't necessarily need to be. They've been responsive every time I hit them and I'm looking through the menu system. Everything stayed completely sealed. Um, Wear and tear wise, the finish is actually holding up pretty well. In fact, the anodizing on their mount is actually holding up a little bit better than my Aero Precision, you know, factory Cerakote job um, is. So uh, like I said, th those are my only real complaints. So um, hopefully, you know, given that uh, I've had a list of things when talking about different thermal optics, um, you know, keep it with a grain of salt that there could be a lot of things to complain about in terms of a digital optic. And those are really my only two, you know, kind of quirks that I've discovered in terms of this optic. And again, that paired with the fact that there have been zero failures or reliability issues, um, I will deal with those minor nuances when it comes to this optic. So I hope you found this video informative and useful. If you are on the fence of what thermal optics may be right for you, honestly, like I said, this has probably been one of the coolest things I've got to play around with on the channel to date. I've really, really enjoyed using it as a clip on thermal optic for the advantages I explained earlier in the video. So at this point, if you have the itch to buy the AccuFire and send this for yourself, 
Use discount code 4MR. It'll save you 5%. It will also help support the channel further so I can continue producing content like this. If you have any questions that I didn't address in this video, leave them in the comments below. I try to be as responsive as possible to all you guys' comments. And I'd really like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, especially if you're sticking around to the very end of this video. And as always, have a good one.